Rudolf Steiner's mystery dramas are the wildest dramas ever written. Mm -hmm. They are incomparable to anything that I am aware of in the whole history of drama. Mm -hmm. They show the on the stage what it means to try to truly go through an inner development, a soul development, a spiritual development, how the forces of destiny create opportunities and challenges for our different characters, how the different spiritual beings, the adversary forces, but also the forces of our soul, the elemental world, play into our life. You could say it opens the tapestry a bit of what is behind each and every human life today. Yeah. Because every life, every biography is a mystery drama. It is, yeah. And my love of them is this experience that I've heard from a 20-year-old, I've heard it from a 70-year-old, the fact that they would say, it's as if I saw my life on the stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But bringing to it understanding through that which remains in our sub and unconscious selves of the spiritual beings, of the soul beings, of the elemental beings that work into our lives all the time, whether we're conscious of it or not. Mm -hmm. And it helps me and others begin to recognize the vastness of what life on earth really is. Yeah. I think like Cygnus' book, what was the title of her book? Um, why, why on Earth? Why on Earth? She, she was the one that spoke on, I think, Thursday morning. Yes, she did. Yeah, Thursday morning. So, yeah, so for people who want to find out what she is thinking about, why on Earth are we doing what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Yes. Yeah. And Sherry Wildfire was just absolutely amazing this morning. I didn't get the end of her of her talk, but I got most of everything else. So, yeah, the young people really need this kind of thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. So, in other words, full steam ahead, and of course, you haven't become a millionaire in the meantime, have you? <laughs> Rather not. <laughs> Rather not. <laughs> Going from poorly paid jobs to extremely poorly, poorly paid, paid jobs. Yeah. <laughs> it's but not just, a job, it's no. a passion. Exactly. And exactly. we're grateful for every little bit yeah. of support, yeah. financial, yeah. human, yeah. soul, help. encouragement, yeah. help. This yeah. world, from the spiritual world, yeah. from those on this side of the threshold, on the other side, to bring a project which to rational thinking is actually impossible. But uh, somebody quoted Napoleon, but then wasn't quite sure if it was Napoleon who said it, but to have said, the difficult we do today, the impossible waits a little bit. Yeah, right. And then we so, do it anyway. And then we do it, it can't anyway. be done. Everybody says it can't be done, and then it's done. Mm -hmm. I mean, the play, the way that is, and of course, this is now Friday night. We just saw the last part. Uh, we have been seeing one part every every evening, and tomorrow we're going to see the whole thing. So uh, morning, afternoon, and evening, right? That's correct. So, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the beauty of it all is that we can see it twice. And this that was kind of an inspiration. Yeah. When it was first planning, the very first conference in 2009 yeah. around the first play, The Portal of Initiation. I said, this idea is crazy. Are people going to think I'm nuts? Mm -hmm. Having them see it twice? Oh, yeah. And I said, oh, let's just try it. That's right. Um, understanding, for those of you not so familiar with the mystery dramas, each mystery drama is somewhere between 
five and six or seven hours per play per of play. production. Yeah. Um, so. So we're talking about 80, 28 hours of. Probably right. something like that. Between yeah. 20 and 28. Yeah. Maybe 25-ish. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a nice middle balance. Anyway, it's quite a lot to ask people to sit through them twice, but the reaction, the feedback was such that everyone said, this has been a gift. Yeah. Now, 2014, we cannot do that. <laughs> no. Unless people come for the dress rehearsals. Exactly. Which probably I would make open. Yeah, but that might be, be a good rehearsal. idea. That might be a good idea. But um, yeah. what I'm asking of amateur actors is pretty overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, just the and words. Not even to learn all the words. <laughs> And learning the lines but is you know something the first I was step, not the not the final goal yeah learning your lines is the foundation on which you begin to do the play exactly <laughs> well then you have to start living it in a way but <laughs> and that's uh, the hard part. but as far as the, all these hours are concerned I have two girlfriends and um, uh, my husband who uh, at that time they said, us sit six hours? Because we had the play in Toronto, The Soul's Awakening, we had it in Toronto when Mark Levine brought it through. 1995. 90, yeah. And, and, and they said, there's no way that we can sit for six hours. And afterwards, they said they didn't even know they were sitting. And neither one of these people was into anthroposophy. So, you know, there's something magic about it. They are. So, yeah. They're absolutely magical. They're drama on a whole different space. I have said it before. One day Hollywood will discover them. I know. And it's crazier than yeah. anything I've seen come out of Hollywood. Yeah. T tell me a little bit about um, how the You With Me fits into it. That has been a development. Um, I've had different, particularly Brigitte Bazoun is someone who our collaboration has grown mm -hmm. over the years. We actually collaborated even on other projects before the Mr. Dramas. Um, mostly we use you with me for those figures who are of a spiritual or a soul nature to try to bring these characters a little bit more into movement since any experience that is of a non-physical nature really is outside of time and space. Yeah. yeah. So that's, of course, very hard to portray. We are human beings. We are graced with a physical body, which is the instrument with which we can work. But we have tried to portray those beings mostly, not only, but mostly through your rhythm, where you have an art of movement which helps to break up the stark physicality mm -hmm. or breaks it up more. Actors can do that too a little mm -hmm. bit, mm -hmm. but it, it can be enhanced mm -hmm. through your rhythm. So this year we've had the most, we've had 11 Eurythmists Isn't that wonderful? involved in Isn't this production. Isn't wonderful? The most we've ever had. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. And, and uh, the stage you had um, in the first, like on, on Wednesday night, Thursday night, not, I don't know about tonight, but you had the, the stage with the slanted um, the rake. Yeah, where they, where you, the the eurythmists were on the on the on the, but, uh, yeah on a slanted uh, podium, and they you know? had to practice quite a bit. That's what I would say. Move on that That's what rake. I would say because you're going uh, up in the back and you're going down in the front. I mean that was quite something. And uh, I talked to somebody who said, you know, he couldn't quite understand what that was, and I said. Well, you know, you move back into the spirit and forward into the physical world. So, you know, going up and down, you know. Oh, he says, now that, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, so little details like that I think is really good for people to know because then they're more comfortable with what happens there, you know. So, yeah. It's been my amazing. experience 
if people can begin to penetrate these amazing works of art. Mm -hmm. As I said, there, to my knowledge, are no dramas in the entire history of drama through its beginnings in Greece, really, mm -hmm. that compare with the breadth, the depth, the width, yeah. of what Rudolf Steiner was able to bring down mm -hmm. in that first, second decade of the 20th century mm -hmm. in these four Mr. Dramas. Twelve were intended, but only five have come, uh, only four, four have come to us. And now, uh, I was talking a little bit to Mark Levine, who I haven't talked to yet. Uh, he said something about uh, that he's in, in a project where he's writing something. Right, they're in a project with a fifth drama using the characters of the Mr. Dramas. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a vision of a, this play was a vision, kind of, or kind of an experience of his and his collaborator, Michael Burton, trying to find a way that these dramas could go on. Mm -hmm. There could mm -hmm. be other people who yeah. attempt to write a fifth. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. The, he has attempted it. Yeah, and of course, Daniel. That we've had these past summers has been really there to help people see the performances, yeah. see the dramas, understand them. Mm -hmm. And yes, that element, of course, will still be there. But we're hoping we can find it find a way to take this conference a step further into really, yes, seeing the dramas, but more clearly seeing the dramas as a vehicle, I don't know if that's the best word, of understanding, of penetrating what is going on in the world today even more accurately and particularly also in the anthroposophical movement. Yeah. Well, I'm just blown away by how wonderfully this has all been, come to, I mean, coming together with interviewing all the different people. So we can share this with the world. You have a Facebook page now, and I'll be putting it on YouTube, and then people can find out what this is all about a little bit, meet some of the people that are in it, and uh, come and join us next summer. And thank you for doing it, Maria. All right, all right. <laughs>